Hi. Today we will consider my option of combining bass guitar in deathcore genre. I think the sound is crushing and dirty, which is exactly the kind of genre that I'm looking for. Let's hear how the raw signal sounds and what we'll be dealing with. Sound bright enough, with a good attack and stable low frequencies. If it were another genre or other conditions, many would go down the path of EQ processing, signal compression and possibly distortion. But this is not all our option. The first thing I did was duplicate the signal to two channels, the second channel we will need later. I would like to add that subscription to my channel is important for me and I would be very grateful to you. Also note that this bass library you can find in my channel Boosty, there it is given in the free version. It's perfect for sound testing, and there you can find a full version of it that has a sizable amount of sound and weighs about 11 gigabytes. I'm currently working on expanding the sheet music range and developing a graphical interface. For those who have purchased the full version, this update will be completely free. But now let's continue. The first thing I decided was to compress the dynamic range with the Saturn, so that the sound before overload was more assembled. In it decided to raise the treble by 2 decibels. Let's hear what happened. As for the overload, I used the plugin R47 from the company Tse. In my opinion, it fits perfectly here. At the end of the video I will give a few tips about this plugin. Please note that the drive is not too configured. This is to achieve a confident but clean overload. Just after it stands a limiter with automatic gain compensation. It's used to cut picks. On a group bus, the first step is to use low frequency compression to make them more controllable and even. The compressor is set to work quite quickly. Next is a Pro MB, in which the work goes with an additional bass and upper middle control. And only after that does the signal saturate with low frequencies. This will make it large and massive. You may hear an overabundance of bass in this case. But it's not a big deal. Next you can understand what I'm talking about. Bass saturation occurs by increasing the sublow frequencies. At this level I reduce the output volume so that plugins do not switch to clipping. In the next plugin I raise the basic frequency of bass, his body. Next there is a correction of frequencies. I use the console from SSL, where I work on middle frequencies, at the same time raise the low. In Pro-Q clear the spectrum based on the ready mix. Again low frequencies and middle. Notice, the plugin works in parallel mode. Now all that's left to do is to compress the dynamic range again and put the sidechain from the kick. Notice that the kick is triggered by the upper frequencies, this is done so that the signal from which the suppression should be sparkling, should be short and attacking, otherwise, the recovery of the compressor will take explicitly longer than necessary. Also in the compressor I lower the output signal level to fit the bass into the mix. Now consider the second channel and what is the processing in it. As I recall, I didn't make any changes to the standard preset. So anyway, 
I'm showing what I used and you can watch this. Before the amp, I used the equalizer to remove the whistle frequency, which was obviously redundant. Then remove the extra low frequencies and the same frequency as in the first plugin. Now let's hear the bass with the drums and I'll tell you about the plugin R47. This plugin has a filter that I recommend adjusting according to your mix. This will directly affect the brightness and stiffness of your bass. If the filter is open, the bass will sound tough, while the filter will stand for half or a little more, it will sound more holistic and gentle. Do not neglect this setting. On this I have everything, thank you for watching and until next meetings.